All right, this is your brother Aisha Yar coming at you with another lesson. First off, I want to give all praises to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakak Wadash. Double honors to the apostles of the great millstone, which I learned is true from. Honors to the elders and brothers out there pushing this word through the four corners of the earth within truth and sincerity. And Shalom to the aqua that's listening and learning. Uh, today's video is going to be entitled Keeping the Faith Secures You. Um, I got spiders to do this lesson because I was watching one of these classics, man. <laughs> watching one of these classics of the uh, apostles of them breaking down Genesis. They was breaking down uh, uh, Genesis, the second chapter through the 20th chapter. And, uh, you know, I'm over here watching it and everything like that. And uh, Apostle Tahar was pretty much saying how uh, I believe they was speaking about uh, he was speaking about Isaac. And how he was always going to uh, feel safe and secure because of his faith that he had within the Most High. Yeah, how about Shem, how was shy. And, uh, you know, after he said what he had to say, I pretty much was just like, man, you know, that's that's real talk. Because that's the only way that we're really going to be secure within the spirit to not bug out and to not do anything uh, going against our Lord is by having faith within these words that we uh, learn. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play this little segment so you can uh, see where I got it from. You can listen to him and then I'm going to bring out a few scriptures um, backing that up. All right. So let's uh, let's play it. Land of Egypt as thou camest unto Zohar. Yeah, because anywhere you have land and water, you, you, you have cattle to eat the grass, to drink the water. So that's going to bring um, uh, fowl. That's going to bring bees to create uh, honey and so forth. So he saw that land that was rich with, with water and, and uh, soil. So he said, I'll choose that land. And Abraham gave him the first choice. You know why? Because Abraham knew that the Lord was with him. And no matter where Abraham went, the Most High was going to bless him anyway. That's called faith. Go ahead. Okay, so it's Abraham, not Isaac, Salakia. But um, as you can see, like he said, you know, uh, Abraham was moving without uh, any fear or anything like that because he already knew whatever land that he was going to go into, the most I was going to take care of him. And he, like he said, he said, that's called faith. Okay, that's called faith. You know what? Let me play that again, actually. Let's play that one more time. Let's, let's get... There we go. To drink the water. So that's going to bring um, uh, foul... That's going to bring bees to create uh, honey and so forth. So he saw that land that was rich with, with water and, and uh, soil. So he said, I'll choose that land. And Abraham gave him the first choice. You know why? Because Abraham knew that the Lord was with him. And no matter where Abraham went, the Most High was going to bless him anyway. That's called faith. Go ahead. Then Lot and that's powerful right there, man. That's powerful right there. Like he said, that's called faith. He said that's called faith all right so at the end of the day this is a thing where um we have this same this same spirit too we have this same um belief as well you know no matter where we go and no matter what we do we believe that the most high is going to be with us through troublesome times you know and we definitely be going to believe that and we're going to have to believe that when jacob's trouble starts okay because at the end of the day you know, we can be out here doing Jacob's trouble and depend on ourselves. We can depend on ourselves and we definitely can depend on Esau. We can depend on our people, you know, because two thirds of our people are going to be destroyed. All right. So at the end of the day, we need that same spirit as well, you know, and to be like, yeah, you know, the most High is going to take care of us because there's plenty of examples within the scriptures that shows you that Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah was going to take care of the ones that sigh and cry and the ones that call upon his name. And right now, that's what we're doing. We're calling upon the names of Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, man. And we're keeping the commandments, statutes, and laws to our best abilities every single day, man. So we can store up those uh, heavenly treasures, so to speak. Those receipts, okay? So now, let's uh, get into the scriptures, man. Let's get let's get um, Deuteronomy 31 and 1. So this is Deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 1 and it says and moses went and spake these words unto all israel and he said unto them i am 120 years old this day i can no more go out and come in also the lord has said unto me now shall not go over this jordan 
the Lord thy power, he will go over before thee, and he will destroy these nations from before thee, and thou shalt possess them. And Joshua, he shall go over before thee, as the Lord hath said. And the Lord shall do it to them as he did to Sahan and to Og, king of the Amorites, and to the land of them whom he destroyed. And the Lord shall give them up before your face, that you may do unto them according to all the commandments which I have commanded you. Be strong and of good courage, fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy power, he it is that doth go with thee, he will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. See? And it says, And Moses called unto Joshua and said unto him in the sight of all Israel, Be strong and of a good courage, for thou must go with this people into the land which the Lord has sworn unto their fathers to give them, and thou shalt cause them to inherit it. And the Lord, he it is that doth go before thee, he will be with thee, he will not fail thee, neither forsake thee, fear not, neither be dismayed. So this is the same spirit that we need to have when Jacob's trouble come. We need to have this spirit even right now because we are living in Babylon the Great. We don't know what's going to happen the next, next, next second, the next minute, the next days, you know, weeks. You know, this is the this is the devil's land. Literally, man, Esau runs it, you know, and, the, and Esau has definitely made our people into even more devils, man, because our people are wicked. And like I said, you never know what's going to happen the next day and everything like that. So we're not supposed to fear what happens or what might what might happen to us while we live in here in captivity and we supposed to have the same spirit when jacob's trouble begins because why it says if you were doing what you're supposed to do if you were calling on the lord and you were trusting in him it says he will be with thee he will not fail thee meaning he will not give you up into situations that's gonna put you in an even worse situation or he's not gonna give you up to the slaughter man he's gonna be with you to protect you He's not going to forsake you, man. And that's a that's the point, man. We want the spirit to be upon us so then we can feel secure within, you know, our faith, our power. All right. Because at the end of the day, this is what you have about Shem Yahweh Shah is going to do, man. You know, he's going to put the spirit upon us to not re, uh, take to not take that chip. He's going to put the spirit upon us to move accordingly. It's like it says in the scriptures. We believe that the elect, they're going to eat. They're going to drink. I mean, they are going to eat. They're going to drink because it is written. All right. But at the end of the day, we just don't know if we are part of the elect. So to make sure that we are, like the scriptures say, you're supposed to make your calling and election sure. So that's what we're doing right now, man. We're doing that right now. So then when these times come, the most High can be with us and not forsake us. OK, so now let's get Romans 8 and 24. This is Romans 8 and 24. It says, for we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For when a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. Likewise, the Spirit also help in our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself make an intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. So at the end of the day, we hope to be part of the elect, you know, because we don't see it. You know, we, uh, we know the Most High exists, but we haven't seen him. Okay, the only way that we know that we saw him was when we were in the spirit world, when we died um, after our, in our past life. You know, we went into the spirit world. We were before you. How about Shemmy? I was shy. You know, we saw the angels and everybody that was up there, but we don't remember that. We technically, you know, we, we don't remember that, you know, because we came back into our, our life that we're living right now. And, you know, we just believe through the spirit that he exists, you know, because the most high gives us signs. He's give he gives us these scriptures. And he gives us other certain material to let us know that he exists. So these are things that we hope for that we have not seen. We hope that this power that we speak of can protect us, man. And that leads to what? Faith. That's why it says, but if we hope for that, we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. And patience meaning suffering. All right. Because we suffering, living this everyday life, waiting for our Lord to come back. But we have faith and we hope. Now, you know, the most high protects us and looks after us within these troublesome times that's coming. Point blank period, man. So now let's get Psalms 18. Let's get Psalms 18 and 1. And it says, uh, A Psalm of David, the servant of the Lord, who spake unto the Lord the words of this song in the day that the Lord delivered him from the hand of all his enemies and from the hand of Saul. And he said, I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. 
The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my power, my strength in whom I will trust. Trust. Okay. My buckler, the horn of my salvation and my high tower. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. Okay. So this is what we're looking for. Why? Because we trust in our Lord. He's our buckler, our fortress. Okay. Uh-oh. It's like a news article. Look like another mass shooting. <laughs> but anyway, um, it says, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. And that's what we're looking for when Yahweh Shai comes back with the angels. We're looking to be delivered from what? Our enemies. Okay? So we trust in the Lord, man. We believe in this word. And one of the reasons you can tell we believe in this word because we do this work, man. We do this work and we repent it and convert it. So at the end of the day, this is what we lean on, literally. Okay? We lean to, toward this. So let's get Psalms 20 and 7. It says, Some trust in chariots and some in horses. But we will remember, remember the name of the Lord our power. They that are brought down and fallen, but we are rising and stand upright. Or risen and stand upright. Save Lord, let the king hear us when we call. Okay? Because at the end of the day, what? Two-thirds of our people, they're going to trust in Esau. They're going to run and take the chip. They're going to run to these female camps or whatever that they say is, quote-unquote, safe areas, safe locations, safe places to go. You know, they're going to run to their master and look for him to, um, you know, provide and protect them within these uh, last days and everything like that. And they do it now. And like I said, so, some trust in chariots and some in horses. This goes back to your police. You know, especially our women, they definitely learn to down 911 when they get into a situation that they don't like. You know, <laughs> they trust in these police, man. They trust in in, in uh, this government and everything like that. But what what does it say after that, though? It says, but we will remember the name of the Lord, our power. And that's what we lean on. That's what we trust in. We trust in his power. We trust in his power, man. So we're going to trust in the names of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah. Nothing else. Nothing else, man. Let's get First Corinthians. Um, let's get First Corinthians. First, uh, first Corinthians, Salakia, so like uh, four and one. It says, "Let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Yahweh Shai Hamashiach and stewards of the mysteries of the Most High. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. Woo! It's required, man." You can't do this work for Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah without having faith within him, man. You're supposed to be found faithful, man. It is required for you to have faith, man. Because if you don't have faith, you're pretty much being a hypocrite. You're pretty much doing this work because, you know, you see other dudes doing it, other men doing it, and it looks good. You like going out there with the fancy garment or whatever. You like going out there feeling like you're a part of something. No, this is not a thing to be like, yeah, I'm a part of something. It's not a gang. This is not an organization or something like that, man. This is our heritage. This is who we are. We go out there to warn and to wake up our people to let them know that it's time for us to go back home. The Lord is getting ready to take us back home and you all need to wake up and start living according to who you are. This is not a thing where it's a, it's a, fashion, show, a fashion show or a thing that's to go out there and have fun. It's to curse out white people or whatever the case may be, man. No, 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 no. This is the thing, like I said, where we're trying to get our people to realize who they are. And so it is required of us to be found faithful. Okay? Because without faith, you don't have anything that the Lord loves, man. Really? Because you 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 don't you you just going out there doing it for whatever other reason, man. You got a lot of people that's going out here doing this Israelite thing for money. Because there is a lot of uh, Israelite groups out there that have sold out, you know. And they going out there doing this for money. They going out there to be seen. They're doing this thing to pick up women or whatever the case may be. That's not faith, man. That's going out there attending to your flesh, attending to the pleasures of this world. That's not faith. We going out here because we have faith that the Most High Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai is getting ready to come back and bring correction upon Earth again, and we looking forward to it. So we go out there through faith because we know. That the Lord is getting ready to do this, man. And we're going to keep doing this because we believe through faith. If we keep doing this, we can be part of that that 144,000 number. We can be part of the elect, man. 
So, yes, it is required that you be found faithful, man. Within truth and sincerity at that, man. You know? You're supposed to want to be in this thing. You're supposed to want to grow. You know, not always be on one level, man. You're supposed to always want to, you know, look at scriptures in different lights, so to speak. You know, always make that light brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter every time you read these scriptures, man. So you can become more knowledgeable and more understanding within everything, man. You know, because there's always room to get better. Always. So let's get one more scripture, Revelation 2 and 10, because this is what we're going to need within these last days. It says, fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison that you may be tried. And you shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. So we all know when this scripture right here is not speaking about the uh, spiritual Satan. It's speaking about the physical counterpart Satan, which is Esau, the so-called white man. All right. It says he's going to cast some of us into prison that we may be tried. Some of us may be cast to prison, these FEMA camps. Some of us may be left out in the open to live the pilgrim life. Some of us may be beheaded. It is what it is. And it says, you shall have tribulation 10 days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. So we're supposed to be faithful unto death. If it's meant for us to be beheaded or to become martyrs, it is what it is. But we're supposed to keep that spirit upon us. And be like, you know what? I'm do I'm gonna do everything I'm supposed to do, even if I gotta die for it. But as long as I do that, that's what? Another way of showing your faith. Okay? Because like the scriptures say, the ones that die for the Lord, they're gonna be resurrected right there and there, man. They're gonna see it, and they get, you know, Esau's gonna look at the dead body or whoever's around gonna see that dead body, but that dead body is gonna come back in one final form again because those the ones that were martyred, they're gonna be beamed up first. Okay, they're going to be in the chariots. They're going to be beamed up, man. They're going to be resurrected, come back in those new bodies, and they're going to be saved, man. No sign's not going to leave them down here, okay? And that's the point, man. That's the crown of life because we're going to be um, um, uh, beamed up into the chariots, man. And we're going to be taken home and put into safety forevermore, man. So at the end of the day, like, yeah, like Apostle Har said, man, you know, Abraham was moving and he had the first choice where he wanted to go because he knew no matter what, the Most High was going to bless him anyway because the Lord was what? With him. And we need to believe that too, that the Lord is with us because right now the Lord is with us. He called us into this truth and we're doing the work of the Lord, man. So the Lord is with us right now. He got the spirit upon us to do this work. So we need to take advantage of that to take advantage of this gift that the Most High has given us. So we can make sure that we make it to the end as well, man. And we can receive all things. So, hey, I hope this is edifying, man. So with that, I'm going to say, call Halayim, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rekak Wadash. Double honors to the apostles of the great millstone, which I learned is true from. Honors to the elders and brothers out there pushing this word through the four corners of the earth within truth and sincerity. And Shalom to the Aqua that's listening and learning. And Yahweh Ratzaza, I'll be back with another lesson. Keep pushing, Yasharala. Keep pushing. We almost out of here. Shalom.